everybody and welcome back to an educational bird video to teach you how to care better for your birds. As you guys can see, I have two Quaker parrots, so this video might come off as very hypocritical, but I just really want to bring to light a really harsh reality of Quaker parrots and really talk about some statistics that if you were considering getting a Quaker parrot, then to just really think about the honesty of owning them. So Quakers tend to make popular bird options because they're quirky, they're funny, they're smart, they can learn to talk, they are mischievous, and you know, they're very soft and cute. But it's really important to keep in mind that people post on the internet the good and what they want you to see. I'm one of those people too. I'm never gonna really be posting a video of, you know, my birds when they bite me or when they're throwing tantrums and screaming. I mean, I have before, but it's not really, you know, content that people wanna see. People wanna see the cute and funny things. And this works for pretty much everybody. Because of this, this causes people to believe that, you know, what you see on the internet is what a Quaker parrot is to own. A lot of people get Quaker parrots when they're babies, probably at four months old, when they are completely weaned off of formula and they're able to come home with you. And this is where people kind of, you know, respond a lot saying, I don't know what you're talking about. My Quaker is so sweet. Yeah, babies are sweet. And me? baby pair you get is going to be cute and sweet and kind, including Quakers. But the thing about them is that once they reach about a year old, they hit puberty and that is where the biggest change comes. Quaker parrots experience a really, really brutal puberty to deal with. And this can usually last anywhere from six months to the full year. And during this puberty, they do a complete 180 change in personality. They'll start attacking you for no reason, flying to you to attack you, biting, getting territorial. They get really mean, their bites can hurt, they draw blood if they want to. During Kiwi's puberty, it was really bad. He suddenly, you know, switched from being really nice to everybody and just attacking everyone, including us, our family members. And that's just something that you have to learn how to deal with and figure out how to calm them down, help them out, but you are gonna get nipped. Quakers are the types of parrots who pretty much bite for fun and think that it's funny to bite you. So despite it not happening as much anymore, Kiwi still bites out of pure entertainment. And yeah, it hurts a lot and it can be pretty much a daily experience getting nipped at least once, which is something a lot of Quaker owners do experience. And some talk about it and some just don't. After their puberty ends, it's really rare for them to go back to their really sweet baby-like, you know, personality. Maybe they won't be as aggressive as they were during puberty, but they're definitely not going to be as sweet as when they were a baby. They'll probably be still angsty and moody. They tend to switch from, you know, wanting a kiss to them biting your face for absolutely no reason at all. This makes them tough pets to deal with, and it really is a question of if you're willing to handle that and love them anyway. Now, Luca, on the other hand, is very sweet compared to Kiwi. Kiwi is more on the angsty side. But a time when you're going to be experiencing that kind of Quaker puberty again is during hormonal seasons. These hormonal seasons can occur one to two times a year, usually during the spring and then end of summer towards fall, where their hormones start to fluctuate again because it is nesting season, they're looking for a mate, and yeah, it's gonna be about a month for each period that you're gonna be dealing with a lot of anger. This hormonal season was particularly bad because we brought in Luca and she started to get very hormonal about a new bird in the home. So I got nipped really bad every single day. He was very aggressive for just breathing in the same space as Luca because he was hormonal. He wanted to nest, he wanted to mate, he was, you know, just all over the place. So yeah, while every single bird does get nippy and hormonal during hormonal season and nesting season, I do find that Quakers are particularly bad. While Mango as well, you know, nipped us and, you know, attacked us or whatever, it was nowhere near as bad as like Kiwi, for example. Now, something I do want to just put out there is that I see a lot of people say, oh no, my Quaker is absolutely sweet. They would never, they're so kind to me. 
I also want to bring up another point. Quakers are one of the most rehomed birds, especially before the age of two, because people can't tame them. They can't handle them during their puberty stages. They can't handle them afterwards, and they just don't want to deal with it. So then my question comes to be that, you know, if there's, let's say, 100 Quakers in the world, and you know, three of those 100 Quakers are very sweet because they don't act like typical Quakers, Luca being one of them because he is very sweet. But Kiwi being, you know, the other bit because he's, you know, typical Quaker. And, you know, all those people who have those typical Quakers are rehoming them. And then the people who got, you know, lucked out and got the sweet Quakers are the ones posting and saying, no, Quakers aren't like that. Mine's so sweet. Don't worry about it. You guys aren't getting the full truth because the full truth is that you are probably going to end up with your chances more like a Kiwi than a Luca. Sorry, Kiwi. I'm probably going to get nipped by him for saying all of this. I also need you guys to understand that the rehoming rate is really high. When I was going on the adoption page for Luca, I looked back into the history and for every 10 birds that were rehomed every single month up for adoption, you know, you'd see your lovebirds, your cockatoos, Amazons, budgies. So let's say 10 of those were just various birds. Four out of 10 of those were always Quakers. I would always see three to four Quakers up for rehoming. Why is that? Exactly for what I'm saying. They're difficult birds to deal with. You have to have a lot of patience. You have to have a high pain tolerance because you will get used to those bites. And you just have to really learn how to deal with it. When Kiwi gets hormonal, we try and give them baths, showers, we try and distract him with some food, uh, you know, kisses, anything that we know that calms him down. And, you know, we still do get nipped, but it definitely calms him down a lot. And people just, as well, it's hard to read a Quaker parrot's body language. Quaker parrots have very difficult body language to read, and it's extremely subtle. So, I will be making a video in the future about, you know, reading Quaker parrot's body language, but you do have to know how to read yours in particular because it is really subtle. Any tiny change when they, you know, in a millisecond when they switch from being happy with you to biting you because they suddenly don't want to be touched. They also have the issue of being overstimulated. When Quaker parrots get too excited, too much sunlight exposure, you know, too much noise going on, you know, they turn from getting excited and happy to suddenly just attacking and it's so hard to calm them down once they get overstimulated. So you have to try and catch it and calm them down before they reach that threshold because otherwise they literally chase you throughout the whole house just to attack you because they're overstimulated. They don't know what to do with all of that containment. So am I saying don't get a Quaker parrot? Yeah, a little bit. But if you do, I'm really like so honest about getting one. Just please understand this reality because a lot of people think, oh no, no, I can totally handle it. And then when it comes to that time, I've gotten tons of messages through my Instagram with people, you know, asking me, you know, my Quaker is biting me all of a sudden. They're attacking me. They like, you know, are so territorial. I don't know what to do. Like I'm thinking of rehoming, but I don't know like what to do. I can't see them, you know, like they, they're not the Quaker I got when I was a baby. Yeah, because you know, people don't heed this warning. And then, you know, who pays the price? Not you. It's the Quaker parent. They're the ones who lose their family. They're the ones who get rehomed and they're no longer in, you know, a place where they thought they would be forever. So selflessly, if you honestly can deal with this, every single parrot is difficult, but I'm just speaking about Quaker parrots in particular because I know those comments saying, oh, every parrot bites, every parrot gets hormonal, every parrot acts like this. I'm talking about Quaker parrots in specific. If you need to go look up another parrot, go look at a video specifically. This is specific Quaker parrots. Some days I feel like, oh yeah, they are so funny, you know, they talk, they make me laugh, but you know what, there are days where I'm so overwhelmed because, you know, like it's, it's too much as well. You know, I didn't think about this before, um, mainly because I have a son, Conyer. They are like one of the loudest parrots, like, at least the loudest species of Conyer. But Quakers are loud. They are very loud parrots, and that is also something to consider. Um, while I do love when they, you know, blab and chat and whatever, when they do scream, it is, it is loud. They are noisy birds. They require a lot of attention. Like, they'll punish you for leaving them alone. Sometimes when we leave the house, we're like, we'll be right back. Give us like literally an hour. Come back after an hour of like grocery shopping and I get nipped just for leaving. That's it. So they're stupidly smart. It honestly scares me a lot of the time how smart Quaker parrots are. 
So yes, they have their benefits. Yes, they can be very loving, but it's just so important to understand that they have a pretty dark side that you have to be aware of because I really don't want to see more Quaker parrots being rehomed because people can't tame them, people can't handle them. You know, they got surprised when they reached a year old. You know, they also live a pretty long time, anywhere from 20 to 30 years. So it's not a parrot that you get to just rehome after like, I don't know, five years and then you're like, oh, okay, you know what? Like, I can't handle it anymore. Cause like I said, like the parrots are the ones who suffer, not you. Like you get rid of it, okay, there you go. But you know, the parrot's the one who is, got bonded to you, got to know you, got comfortable there. They thought you were their family. You want a Quaker, make sure it fits your lifestyle. You have a lot of patience, fits your personality, fits your bills, uh, your home, and just, you know, Think it really, really well because I just, I don't recommend Quaker pairs to anybody. Everybody who sees my videos of either them talking, doing funny things, and they say, oh, I want a Quaker pair. I'm like, no, no, you don't. No, please, no. I will always please get one. And if people are really adamant about it, do your research, educate yourself. Just don't want to see any more rehomes. I hope this video helped to put a realistic perspective on quick ownership. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of us, subscribe. Make sure to check out our social media links down below. And see you guys next time. Bye.